Well, I, when I grew up, I grew up where they call inland. It was probably about 15 miles from the ocean, but it seemed like a long ways in. Uh, just, uh, you know, I think I got to the beach when I was about 13 for the first time. So I walked out on Manhattan Beach Pier and I saw guys surfing. And I couldn't believe it. One guy turned around, actually went backwards standing on the board. I just going, I just couldn't believe it. It's the first time I've ever seen surfing. I'd never seen a movie of it. I didn't, there was hardly that much television, you know. I mean, and uh, just to see guys riding a wave was just dazzling to me, especially, you know, the angle of the pier looking down and watching, you can see the trail and the track of water. And I just went, I knew that was for me, right? The first time I saw it. And it's Beach Pier. The best I could do then was I, had, I ran down on the beach and I watched them. When they lose their boards, I'd run up and grab their boards. Of course, these boards weighed about 9,500 pounds, so they just roll over me, smack into me. I had bruises on both legs. Just so I could jump on and paddle about 10 feet out, and the guy would yank the board and say, hey, thanks, kid. And I'd go, I touched one. I actually touched a surfboard. I mean, I was that thrilled by it. I went to the beach. When I got down to most of the beach, I got tortured by the real in gang, you know, because I was an outsider from, you know, they didn't know where. They'd never been east of I-5, you know. Uh, well, years later when I was at Malibu, I, I started getting a real lucky deal. My stepfather had a job in the Navy and he drove to Point Magoo along the coast every day. So I got off at Malibu every day on his way up to Point Magoo, which is up by Ventura, and he'd drive me, pick me up at 6 o'clock at night. So I turned into a kind of like Malibu Mike every day at Malibu, all summer long and on the weekends in the winter. So some of these guys on a big swell, Malibu used to be the place to go. So now here comes. Five or six years later, these guys that tortured me, Dewey Weber and, uh, and uh, Henry Ford are these guys, they're going, aren't you, uh, they call me Tiki Mike then, because I used to make these dumb little tikis that they were in high school. I thought they were really cool, you know. And I was reading everything I could in school, in the library, about Hawaiians and surfing and everything about it. Well, they, they all had tikis in their folklore and stuff. So I was making them in wood shop. And, but when I wore them to the beach, they were, the surfers thought they were kind of geeky. They were all wearing St. Christopher medals, you know, enamelized St. Christopher medals. That's what's cool. Tiki were lame. But so you wear it around your neck, I, I wore it around a leather thong, leather yeah. and I thought I was a real surfer, you know, and everyone called it, hey, Tiki Mike. And so <laughs> years later, they came to Malibu, and I said, are you the same Tiki Mike that we used to know Mount Hermosa? And I go, yeah. And I go, hey, your surfing's getting pretty good. So I, I was accepted then as, as having talent and that I had developed in the ranks of surfing. The thing of localism where there's like, at Ventura, where there's actually gangs, and if you're an outsider, they come and slash your tires and stuff like that. This is our beach. I, I can't stand that. I've seen it happen in Mexico, too, at K38. Down in Baja, it's starting to happen around where I live, where the Mexicans say, this is our water. You guys are gringos. Or you go to Hawaii, you know, you're a holly. I just don't, I don't, I just don't like racism in any form. I just, I think the ocean's the ocean. The ocean should be uh, enjoyed by everybody and respected by everyone. When I went, like I said, I went to, you know, I didn't even see a movie until about my junior here in high school. They came out with, Bud Brown came out with The Big Surf. And so then I wanted to be, I saw all kinds of people I wanted to emulate. But in my growing up period, the only first person I saw was the first day I ever saw anybody surf. It was a guy that turned around backwards, and that was Bob Hogan. And he, he was a local lifeguard in Hermosa Beach, went to Hawaii every year. <clears throat> and actually, Greg Knoll, because he was a skinny kid there, and he was he could ride forward, backwards, and stand on his head. The same Greg Knoll we know now, it's this, this big around. He was a skinny little kid, and he could do anything on the board, too. And I remember looking in their car, and both of them had trophies. They had won trophies in a surf contest or a paddling race, and I went, wow. I mean, I remember I'm just a 12-year-old Grimmy just looking in a car, never even been on a board before, and I've seen these guys riding these waves and having trophies in their car. And, they had cool 41 Ford coupes all buffed out and lifeguards and I'm going, this is a life for me. I want to be a lifeguard and go to Hawaii and surf the big surf. But then when I went to Malibu, of course, the guy, the, the guy to copy and emulate was Mickey Dora. He, I mean, Dora had such charisma. Mickey Dora had uh, facial expressions. He always had a classic car, a Cadillac or something. He always did artwork on a surfboard that said Kazam, Gaboom, or Superman. He was way ahead of his time. And every kid on the beach, we all emulated everything Mickey did. The way he walked, the way he talked, the way he moved, the way he tilted his sunglasses, he, and the way he surfed. Because he was quite a, quite a good surfer. And, and he was real quick and agile, and they call him the cat, because he could just run around that board real agile. 
And that was his spot. Malibu, he wasn't very good going left. He, he, I mean, he was okay. He only he never did real well in Hawaii, but he could really ride Malibu. My, my philosophy started pretty simple from my mother, and I think it still holds true. It just, she never pushed me about what to do anything. I never would try to, she never tried to lead me into being a doctor or a, a dentist or anything, but her main thing was to be a good person and uh, take care of yourself, take care of your health, and uh, do unto others as you do to yourself. It was pretty, it's pretty basic stuff, but it's really big stuff. You know, the, the, sometimes the little stuff's big stuff. And uh, try not to cheat and lie and all, and that's the kind of thing that just start bringing you down, you know? It's uh, basically trying to tune into yourself, who you are as a person, what you can possibly do out there in this world, how to help some other people besides just yourself. It's easy to be greedy. It it's, 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 uh, takes a little more talent and skill to not be so greedy and actually help somebody else that may not be as gifted as you. Actually, I kind of like the direction it's going now. It went for that, that shortboard era. I was very disappointed with all you saw were kids surfing and you started losing all the, uh, the adults and uh, people that were really good at one time on longboards all kind of dropping away because all they were making was short boards. And now with this, uh, the return of the longboard, I mean, people are starting to have fun again. And the direction of surfing is fun. It should be fun. And um, I, I'll answer my, who said that? People always say, who's the best surfer in the world? I go, the one having the most fun. And I go, wow. I thought you were going to say, you know, one of these, Kelly Slater. I go, no, if he's having fun, he's the best surfer in the world. But anybody that, but you should be out there to have a good time. And, uh, that any way you want to do it. Some people just stand there on a big board and cruise along, and that's great. Other people have to cut real hard and turn and slack and rip off the top. That's the way they have fun. That's fine too. Well, I see myself. Uh, I, I still see myself pretty much doing what I'm doing now: painting and surfing. Live to surf, surf to live.